And then now that I'm towards the edge, I put it all the way down. Oh, there we are. There we are. So what I was doing, that was perfect timing. Again, rod tip down so that I can get the lure as low as possible. But as soon as I start feeling it hitting oysters too quickly, like right there, <laughs> I'm actually gonna pause it for a second, make sure that I'm down on the bottom. Oh, there we are, there we are. So that one hit, that one hit after the pause. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use the mulligan lure around oyster bars. We have an oyster bar right next to us and I'll give some tips on just maximizing results. Number one is highly recommend using a weighted hook like this. As long as the oyster bar is less than three feet of water, this is a game changer. You need to be weedless. If you're doing deeper than, than three feet of water, then use a, at least a weedless football jig where, where you can be weedless. It's crucial. Oysters are incredibly good at snagging onto any exposed hook. And so what we need to do, just like, just like fishing mangroves, is we really need to make sure that we dig that hook point in so that there's nothing for it to snag on oysters. Total game changer for fishing around oysters and other hard structures. So. As far as tips on, on how to maximize results, we have, I don't know if you can see this, there's two little poles right here, and in between it is a big oyster bar. And so the oyster bar right now, the, this water level, it's about a foot of water on top of the bar, and it gets down to about three feet on the edges. And so what I like to do, especially at the high tide, I like to buzz right over the top of it. And to do that without getting snagged, rod positioning is very important. So when I'm fishing over the shallower part, I have my rod tip up, I'm feeling for snags. As soon as I feel an oyster, I just I speed it up just a little bit more. And I just basically want to just to make sure that I get kind of close to the oysters, but not too close, not not close enough where uh, where it can get wedged in between them. Um, so so no uh, no strikes there. So then I'll just cast further down, right, targeting the top of it. So I basically cast it over. So I'm going to keep the rod tip up. And then as you'll see on the going over the, the bar, rod tip up, but as soon as I start targeting the edges of the bar, then I'll do rod tip down. And so the whole time I'm just feeling for, for bumps. I want to be able to feel oysters every once in a while without just totally dragging. So now that I'm getting a little bit closer, I'm starting to put my rod tip down. And then now that I'm towards the edge, I put it all the way down. Oh, there we are, there we are. So what I was doing, that was perfect timing. What I was doing is I was following, I was following the contour of the oysters, and that's what, whoa, whoa, got a bird over here. I was following the, uh, the contour, and the snook was probably holding right on the edge, right on the deep edge, which is very common. And as that lure started going down, it went right in his face, even though we have, we have pretty bad tides right now. If you get a good lure in front of a fish's face, they'll usually go ahead and eat it. And so here we are. See if we can get this guy up. Not a giant one, but still fun, sleek. So there we are, mulligan in his mouth. Nice little snook. Comes to join the, uh, the tutorial. And so, game on. And so all we have to do is just keep doing that. Keep doing exactly what we just did. Get this hook out real quick. There we are, hook out. Nice little mulligan catch back in action. And so very important, right? Often, obviously when you catch a fish that, you know, that hook gets, uh, gets exposed after the fish, same thing, put it back into place, get that hook point buried back in. Now we're ready to catch some more. All right, so now that we, uh, we realize, we now know that at least those fish seem to be holding right off the edge. So now we're gonna buzz one right along the edge. And so in this case, again, that's about, the right size there or the, the right amount of distance to, to hit the edge. So I'm gonna start with the rod tip down, but just in case I got a little bit, I think I got a little bit too close to it. I could feel the oysters. As soon as I start feeling those oysters, put the rod tip up immediately, right? We do not wanna get snagged. Oh, we got a bunch of mullet out there and this looks good. So uh, again, rod tip down so that I can get the lure as low as possible. But as soon as I start feeling it hitting oysters too quickly, like right there, <laughs> another, another, another snook. But yeah, I was feeling, I was feeling those, uh, was feeling those oysters, and so I started lifting my rod up. Again, these these fish are holding on the bottom. They basically this little guy, this little guy probably saw that lure, you know, kind of bump and shoot off right out of the tree or right out of the uh, the shells, and couldn't help but to take a swipe at it. So, again, same thing, perfect hook set. Even though this this lure is weedless, it gets a really really nice hook set. Seems like the fish are really holding 
on this section of the bar. So let's see if we can get one more before we close and go to the next lesson. Oh, so I already felt just something just thump it. All right, so I'm not feeling any, any, uh, any oysters, so I think I'm right on the edge. So I'm gonna go with rod tip down and slow it down. Give it a couple little twitches. Rod tip down still, I'm not feeling any, any uh, shell. So basically that you can't go down too far if you're not feeling in shell. Uh, where you really wanna make sure you don't go down too far is when you're on top of the, of the shell and get stuck. So that was, uh, that was just off the edge of it. So I never really felt shell. So I'm gonna go a little bit further to the right. And let's see if we can get some action. After that second snook, a, uh, a dolphin came in. So we, we waited a little bit for everything to settle down. Those fish still might be a little bit, a little bit freaked out. But again, same thing. I'm actually gonna pause it for a second, make sure that I'm down on the bottom. Oh, there we are, there we are. So that one hit, that one hit after the pause. We might actually have a redfish on now. What is that? Yeah, there's a redfish. So again, same, same exact spot, same type of strategy. You can definitely catch, definitely catch multiple types of fish. And so even after that dolphin was here, dolphin literally just left. Now we have not a giant red, but a solid one. And again, you know, the redfish of all size and snook will hit with the same retrieve. All right, so we got that redfish off. Let's go ahead and release them. This lure has just been awesome. Just a great all-purpose lure. This is the four-inch mulligan. It basically works all season long. And when rigged on this Haas Helix, so this is a three-aught Haas Helix hook with the one-eighth ounce weight. This, in my opinion, is the best combination for fishing around oysters or around mangroves that are under three feet of water, even docks, any sort of structure that's under three feet of water, this thing is just really, really hard to beat. So if you haven't yet tried this lure out, highly, highly recommend it. This has become my absolute favorite for the shallows. They're only available at fishdrawn.com. Both the Mulligan lure and the Haas Helix hooks are only available at fishdrawn.com. I'll put a link down below for your convenience. And they actually come with a guarantee. If you don't catch a ton of fish, if you're not absolutely thrilled with how well they work, you get all your money back. It's that simple. We put our, our money where our mouth is. We know they work. We know you're gonna like them. And as soon as you do get these, we'll actually send you an email with a mini course that actually shows exactly how to rig them, how to retrieve them, and when to use them, and actually when not to use them. Obviously, they're not for every situation, but you'll get the entire mini course so that when you get on the water, you know you're gonna be using the right lure at the right time to maximize your valuable time on the water. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions at all, comment down below. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.